Hi there. Um, today I would like to talk about accessibility. What does accessibility mean? I think there are many parallels between accessibility in the physical world and the online world. And in both cases, um, there are two um, interesting aspects of it, I think. One aspect of it is that there is a particular type of accessibility that is often the first thing people that that people think of when they uh, when you bring up the term accessibility. In the physical world, uh, I think it's wheelchairs. It's wheelchair ramps and elevators and making things accessible to a wheelchair user. And on the web, it is vision impaired people. It's people who are using a screen reader and making a website accessible to them. And I think what is becoming more um, uh, acknowledged that the, is that there's actually a long tail of accessibility in both the physical world and the online world. In the physical world, there's uh, people who are perhaps temporarily disabled who are in crutches or in a wheelchair temporarily. There are people who are carrying a lot of things or uh, rolling along a cart there are people who may be able to walk but uh, may be restricted in how much effort they're able to do, how many steps they can climb, or how high of a step they can climb. And in the online world, besides the vision impaired, there are also people who have slower devices, who are uh, distracted, who are uh, maybe using an older device or using a slow connection or have a restricted connection that is either filtered by their institution or their government or have a connection that is only temporary who are only able to access for example public Wi-Fi and all of these scenarios need to somehow be addressed in the web world if you truly want to make your website accessible for example, let's think of a couple of scenarios. One scenario that um, I like to use uh, because it's so easy to understand, I think, is a um, uh, an abused teenager. Uh, imagine uh, someone who is like 13 years old, um, their guardians or their parents are totally controlling of their environment, they don't go to school, they're, um, they are restricted to being at home, uh, their entire life is observed and controlled so they can't get online without someone looking over the shoulder. Anytime they're using the internet, someone is looking over their shoulder. So this um, young person may see some references to, let's say, a government website about helping abuse victims ab escape, uh, or a, a nonprofit that helps people in their situation. But to get more information, they need to get online and get on the website. And under normal circumstances, they can't access the website because uh, their parents are looking over their shoulder, and they simply won't stand for it. As soon as they see them trying to access their website, they're gonna say, what are you doing? What, you think you're abused? Uh, no, you can't, you can't go to the website. But one day, they're looking for something in the bathroom closet, and they notice that there's an old cell phone uh, <laughs> that's just been forgotten and left behind in this bathroom closet. And so they uh, remember it for later, and a couple nights later, they sneak away into the bathroom while everyone is sleeping, and they find the charger for the cell phone, and they connect it to 
the power and they power it up and they know how to the cell phone obviously don't doesn't have service because uh, there are various barriers to having cell phone service like uh, payments and uh, having a sim and so on but the cell phone also supports Wi-Fi so they're able to connect to, they're able to connect to the house Wi-Fi uh, because they, they figured it out they looked at the router so they were able to get over that barrier the connection barrier so for the next 10 or so minutes that they feel comfortable using the cell phone they have relatively unrestricted internet access but they are using a device that's like 10 years old it might be a, a blackberry they're using a blackberry and technically that device is able to browse the internet and connect to the website but what do you think is going to happen when they try to go to the website so I know that Google supports uh, is uh, very compatible, very accessible to older devices. You can actually use Google search with limited success using browsers as old as Netscape and like IE4. But uh, once they pull up those search results from this uh, uh, Google search and they navigate to the government, they try to navigate to the uh, nonprofit's website, what do you think is going to happen? Do you think they're going to be able to browse this website without any issues? Do you think this website is going to be slow uh, and they're going to have some, issue, some issues accessing the menu bar? Uh, do you think there's going to be a cookie warning and like a newsletter pop-up uh, and other things that will get in the way of their using the website? Or do you think they won't be able to access the website at all because their device is too old and maybe the SSL library is too old? Uh, maybe the device clock is not set correctly and they don't know how to set the clock. So given all these possibilities for breakage in, for example, the SSL protocol and the HTTPS handshake, uh, what do you think is a higher priority for this teenager? Are they more worried about a man in the middle attack on their network and someone being able to inject JavaScript into their page that they're trying to access? Or are they more worried about not being able to access the page at all and not having the time to uh, load it and not having the time, not having enough time to troubleshoot all these issues uh, before they have to sneak back away to their bedroom. Now let's consider another scenario. A person who lives on the street, who has access to a shelter computer. They have access to the shelter computer for 10 or 15 minutes and it's an old computer that's running Windows 7 probably. It might still be running Windows XP for all you know because uh, it's not like uh, shelters or survival centers get new computers all the time. Uh, do you think they'll be able to access the information resource that they're looking for to get help with whatever they need information on? Or perhaps a library computer um, I was recently using, uh, testing my websites on library computers and I went uh, to a, a local library here in uh, Cambridge and uh, this library is seems pretty well funded so they had Chrome OS computers and I opened up the computer and it had basically the newest version of Chrome on there, maybe a couple versions behind and I was able to access my website without any issues. And then I went into another room and I uh, sat down on the computer just like that one and it had Chrome, I want to say Chrome that is like 50 versions, 50 major versions behind the current version. And 
my website experienced a bug. I experienced a bug in my website in this version of Chrome. But I was still able to use all the basic features because um, basically there were some fallbacks. There were some fallbacks and workarounds and I was still able to get done what I wanted to get done. But is your information resource compatible with the version of Chrome that is 50 major versions behind? Or are you just tracking the latest five versions because um, it's so easy to just keep your browser upgraded, you know, just upgrade your browser, what's so difficult about that, but you can't upgrade your browser if it's not your device and you don't have access to upgrade your browser. And there are countless scenarios like this all over the place. Here's another scenario. A user who's using your website on their TV. So there are TVs that are uh, web capable and they have some web browser on there and this browser has very limited features for example in order for the user to type anything in uh, in order for the user to type one letter they need to make about 10 or 15 key presses because they're using an on-screen keyboard with a directional pad If your website requires registration with an email address before it can be used, before a user can contribute anything, before a user can ask a question, or if a user needs to type something in order to ask a question, then you've basically just locked out this user. You've, you've created a huge barrier for them to be able to do anything on your website because before they can even register, before they can make one attempt at typing in their email address, not to mention a password, not to even mention being able to verify their email address if you require that, they need to make hundreds, literally hundreds of key presses on their uh, remote before they can access your website. So this is the long, these are three, just three very common examples of the long tail of accessibility and the kind of issues that you want to be mindful of when you're wanting to make your website truly accessible. Because we think about, um, if you think about wheelchair ramps, for example, well, wheelchair users and basically everyone and anyone requiring the use of wheelchair ramps, anyone and everyone requiring the use of um, elevators, for example, for just like a two-story building, they comprise less than 1% of uh, the people accessing that building. And even for taller buildings, people who need the wheelchair ramps is... Uh, a very small demographic people who need wheelchair ramps to access the train station maybe one or two percent of people you know someone with a suitcase someone with a, with a uh, child uh, uh, carriage and yet um, as a society uh, we have decided pretty strongly because we've actually legislated this that's the law that even this one percent or one tenth of a percent of people should be able to access this building, should be able to access this train station, should be able to access this hospital, uh, because we think that's right, because we think that's fair, that we go through this extra effort just for those few people to uh, remove this barrier to entry, remove this barrier to access, and allow them, uh, include them in access. And on the web, in some ways, the challengers are much smaller because it's much easier to build a simple website than it is to build a wheelchair ramp for a building. And on the other hand, is it can be more challenging because the number of scenarios 
is much bigger and the number of these edge cases that are uh, less than 1% of the user base but are still a significant number of people because if you have a uh, hundred thousand users on your website one percent is a thousand people and one tenth of a percent is a hundred people and even one hundredth of a percent is ten people so if you ignore a demographic that's just only one hundredth of a percent of your demographic you are excluding 10 people from your website if you have a hundred thousand users on your website and is that something that you want is that something that you care about do you care that uh, there are 10 people in the world who will come to your website looking for information that they need or looking to connect with a community that they want to connect with or for some other reason that is important to them uh, presumably you're providing your website for a reason uh, if you're an artist maybe they want to connect with your art are you okay with turning those people away or would you rather try to accommodate them and to me that is the big question of accessibility.